And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! What's going on everybody welcome back to another detroit lions video now the off season is officially underway and the lions are in the re-signing period after signing an offensive coordinator keeping a couple other assistant and positional coaches and of course making a few re-signings with josh woods and jason cabinda the lions are officially making moves in the offseason and everybody has a differing opinion on what the offseason should look like for the Detroit Lions or for their respective team. Some players want to see big free agent signings. Some play, some people want to see trades in the offseason. Some people want to see high draft picks. Some people want to see the Lions trade down in the NFL draft. And while everybody has a very different opinion on how the NFL offseason should look for the Detroit Lions, and while everybody has a different ideal offseason, Brad Holmes has a tendency and Brad Holmes has a model that he is going to follow in this NFL draft season. And like it or not, this is the model that Brad Holmes has and will continue to work under as he rebuilds the Detroit Lions. In today's video, we're going to talk about this model. We're going to talk about how Brad Holmes constructs teams. We're going to talk about how Brad Holmes is constructing this Detroit Lions team and how he's going through this Detroit Lions rebuild. Talk about the pros and cons of it, talking about whether it's going to work or whether it's going to fail and really trying to predict what the offseason is going to look like for the Detroit Lions as they continue to move forward. So starting off with the period that we are in right now, that would be the re-signing period. Now, Brad Holmes really has two big points on whether you're going to get re-signed or whether you're going to get cut slash if he's going to let you walk away from the team. If you're going to get re-signed by the Detroit Lions, you are going to have to have proved yourself with the team, right? These are guys like Romeo Quara from a few years ago when he had that 10 sack season that was Brad Holmes that he was coming in right after that season and he saw okay Romeo Quara produced he's a young player that we can build around he's going to get a three-year extension he's going to get some good money right this offseason Jason Cabin has been here for three years he's been a fullback for three years for the Lions has played really well as a Dan Campbell guy somebody that Dan really likes we're keeping him for a two-year extension Josh Woods super underrated super underrated special teams ace had a couple good plays at the end actual starting linebacker position really young really high potential you're keeping him for another year if not two those are the kind of guys that Brad Holmes likes to bring back the guys that have proven themselves in a scheme and in a system with the team that they are re-signing for right he's not giving these big contracts to players that haven't played for him yet because he doesn't know how they're gonna fit in this system but if you produced in Detroit you can get another contract extension from the Detroit Lions. Whereas if you have not shown the ability to produce at the Detroit Lions system and in the Lions uniform, you likely will not be re-signed or you may even get cut before your contract expires. Examples of this being Desmond Trufant, Jamie Collins, Christian Jones, any line or any player from the Patricia era that was cut recently or a player that was not brought back this offseason because they didn't produce with the Lions falls under this category, right? Desmond Trufant, a former first round pick, somebody that had a lot of success early in his NFL career, did not produce in one year with the Lions. So Brad Holmes said, I know you have another year under contract, but we're moving on from you, right? Jamie Collins even made the active roster, made the starting 53, didn't produce, wasn't trying, wasn't giving the effort. And Brad Holmes says, okay, you're not going to play. I don't care if you made the roster. I don't care if we owe you $8 million. You're not going to play here because you're not playing anyways, right? You have these guys that didn't produce in Detroit and Brad Holmes' philosophy is, well, if you're not going to produce for my team, I'm not going to keep you. I'm not keeping you for what you can do. I'm keeping you for what I know that you can do. And if you've produced before, you can stay. But if you haven't produced, that is, that's all I need to see. There's the door. You can go find a different NFL team. And that's how I really like the GM to approach the spot. Because yes, as much as you're paying these guys to produce for the future, if they haven't 
shown the ability to produce in the past, what, what would make you think that they can produce for you in the future? That's the way that Brad Holmes approaches the re-signing period. And with that being the case, I do believe Jalen Reyes Maven will get re-signed. I do believe Charles Harris, Tracy Walker, and Alex Anzalone will all be re-signed. I think that Josh Reynolds will be re-signed, but I do think Khalif Raymond will walk. And I do think a lot of the wide receivers from this year's class outside of Josh Reynolds will be walking because they just simply didn't really produce all that well a season ago. Now, looking at the actual free agency signings, Brad Holmes has a couple key points that he likes to prioritize when signing free agents. The big one is prioritizing youth, potential, and tools. This is the stage of free agency. This is the stage of the offseason where Brad Holmes doesn't care if you've produced in the past. He cares what you can produce for him, right? Because if you're going after big free agents like Marcus Williams, like Alan Rob, Robinson, like Devontae Adams or like any of the big name guys. Yes, they may have produced for you before, but they are going to be huge contract numbers and they are going to be cap killers for your NFL team. Whereas guys that have all the tools to succeed, but aren't going to cost you a lot of money. Your Charles Harris's, your Damian Ratley's, your Tim Boyle's, those are the guys that he likes to prioritize. Guys that aren't going to cost a lot of money, guys that aren't going to break the bank, but if they're put in the right system or put in the right situation, they can thrive just like we saw Charles Harris do a year ago. A guy that was a former first round pick signed here for a $1.1 million contract in the offseason and had seven and a half sacks and was our most productive pass rusher on the season, he's likely going to get re-signed because of his production and we got him for nothing. And, you know, right, we didn't spend a lot of money in free agency last year, but we got a above average pass rusher for below average money and that's a good signing by Brad Holmes. And this doesn't always work out, right? Damian Ratley didn't make the team. Tim Boyle was the backup quarterback and wasn't very good, but that's why it's a low risk, high reward. Because if you hit on one out of every three, one out of every four of these signings, you're still gonna get two to three really good cheap free agents a season without having the big financial risk of putting your team in a huge cap deficit. Now, the other way you get re-signed as a free agent to Detroit is if you fit a very specific role. Jamal Adams was the leader. He was the locker room guy that wanted to bring energy and wanted to be brought to Detroit for his energy and his leadership. Khalif Raymond was brought here specifically to be a deep threat wide receiver. Alex Sanzaloni was brought here to be a starting caliber linebacker with all the tools that he needed to succeed without having the opportunity in New Orleans. He had an opportunity in Detroit and thrived in that position. So the only way that you get signed as a free agent to Detroit is if you are young with potential and you're going to be very cheap, low risk, high reward, or he is willing to spend a little bit more money on you like Jamal Williams if you have a specific trait or a specific role that he believes that you can fulfill within the actual team that can help benefit this team and make it better. Jamal Williams being the best example, getting a two-year, $6 million contract, the most expensive contract given out to Brad Holmes or given out by Brad Holmes in free agency so far. But where Brad Holmes really thrives in the offseason isn't with his free agency, isn't even with his re-signings, it is with the NFL draft. And that is the biggest philosophy in the Brad Holmes model is you build through the draft. You patch some holes in free agency. You bring in, you know, some leaders in free agency. You bring in some role players, some high potential guys in free agency, but you build through the draft. And that's what Brad Holmes did last year. And as of right now, it seems like that's what Brad Holmes is going to do with this year. Now, Brad Holmes in the NFL draft, first and foremost, prioritizes athletes, right? Penny Sewell, Levi Anwuzariki, Aleem McNeil, and Ifiatu Melifan were the first four picks of the Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell regime. All tested incredibly high with their athletic testing at the combine and all had really good athletic testing scores. Not to mention Sam Brown had a good testing score. Jamar Jefferson did pretty well as well. And Derek Barnes was up there with the rest of them. They drafted athletes after athletes. And a big part of that was that the Lions under Matt Patricia were arguably the least athletic team in the NFL. I mean, I think the biggest emphasis of that was the Thanksgiving game versus the Houston Texans a few years ago, where sure, the Lions may have even schemed a really good football game, but Will Fuller simply outran our cornerbacks. 
Deshaun Watson just simply outran our defensive line and we got out athleted in that game. I think Brad Holmes saw that game and saw a bunch of other games just like that in the Matt Patricia era and said, we can't win games if our guys are being outran. We can't win our games if our guys aren't the best athletes on the field. If we are just supposed to win on scheme, we are not going to win. You need athletes in the NFL to make athletic plays and you're not going to do that with older aging veterans that were never the highest quality athletes to begin with. So that's where Brad Holmes really focused early in the draft was getting athletes, guys that are bigger, faster, and stronger, and guys that can just push the other team around and guys that can change the mentality from being a scheme-based team to being an athletic based team where they're bigger, faster, and stronger. And that was a big point of emphasis last year in the NFL draft. Another point of emphasis was to prioritize the trenches. Offensive line and defensive line were the first three picks by the Lions going Sewell, Aleem, and Levi back to back to back in the 2021 NFL draft. And they did this in a very similar reason to getting athletes. Right, your whole goal as the general manager, if you're Brad Holmes, is to get bigger, stronger, faster, and meaner on the trenches because you win football games in the trenches. Brad Holmes, in part to Matt Patricia, because he started it, but Brad Holmes finished what could be a top 10 offensive line in the NFL, and he added two really good young defensive tackles in the NFL, and I don't think he's done there. I think he's going to address the trenches at least once, if not twice more, in this NFL draft period, and may even address it once or twice in free agency. Brad Brad Holmes' defensive line was much improved from two years ago, but his defensive line wasn't top of the NFL, and that's where I think Brad Holmes wants to get them. So I wouldn't be surprised if we take an edge rusher. I wouldn't be surprised if we take a defensive tackle, and I wouldn't be surprised if we take two, if not even three members of the front seven in this year's NFL draft with three of our top 100 picks, of three of our five top 100 picks. So with that being the case, after prioritizing athletes and prioritizing the trenches, Brad Holmes trusts his scouts. And you might say, well, what does that mean? Of course, you're going to trust the guys that you pay to scout for you. But what I really mean by that is Brad Holmes trusted his scouts. And when Amon Ross St. Brown started falling in the NFL draft, he got to a point where he said, well, we have a good grade on this guy, so we're going to take him. I don't care, you know, why he might be falling, regardless of if other people think he's not good. Our scouts think he's a good player. A lot of people thought Derek Barnes was overdrafted this year, but Brad Holmes trusted his scouts and Brad Holmes said, okay, this is a guy that I see being a future key part of our defense. This is a guy that our scouts tell me is a really good player, regardless of what other people may say. And even if other people think we're overdrafting him or other people think it's bad that we're trading up to get this guy that a lot of people think are is going to be available in the fifth, we're not going to take a chance on missing out on our guy. So they traded up and got Derek Barnes. Jamar Jefferson was looked at as an undrafted running back in this class. And although, yeah, he went with like three picks left in the draft and he would have likely gone undrafted, Brad Holmes said, okay, we have this pick late in the draft class. We're going to use him because we think Jamar Jefferson has an opportunity and we don't want to risk him going to free agency because our scouts have a really, really good grade on it. And I think dominating late in the NFL draft is just as, if not more important than dominating early in the NFL draft because if you can get talented players in the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh rounds of the NFL draft, that's where 80% of NFL talent comes from, right? There's 32 first round picks a season and there is 53 guys on a roster. You get one first round pick a year, you're not going to have a ton of first round guys on your offense and defense. You're going to have to succeed late in the NFL drafts on day two and day three if you want to build a competitive roster. And last year, especially, is where Brad Holmes really, really thrived. Not that his first round was bad because Penny Sewell is a great player, but getting Amon Ross St. Brown on day three, getting Derek Barnes on day three, getting Ifiatsu out of the top 100, getting, you know, Ali McNeil in the third round. Those are all guys that late, middle, late of the middle or late of the NFL draft. Those are all starters. Those are all key role players and key contributors that you get without a quote unquote premium NFL draft pick. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about was cap. Well, another thing of that that about capitalizing late and taking advantage of your late round picks also includes undrafted free agency where Brad Holmes has where Brad Holmes hired or signed Jerry Jacobs, AJ Parker, Brock Wright, and Tommy Kramer, all players that started games for them a season ago as undrafted free agents. Brad Holmes likes to dominate in the late parts of the NFL draft, and he does his research on these late round prospects and trusts his scouts' ability 
to tell him whether these players are worth the pick or not. And then the last thing that I think Brad Holmes' model does really well is has the ideology and has the mindset that the best player available is never a bad option, right? You took you look at last year's draft where right wide receiver was the biggest need. They didn't address wide receiver until pick 112, right? Offensive line was not looked at as a huge need for the Lions, but Penny Sewell was the best player available, so they selected him. If Yatsu Melifano, the cornerback, was not a big position of need. The cornerback in general wasn't a big position of need at the time, and yet Ifiatu Malafano was by far the best player available. So the Lions said, okay, he's the best guy on our board. He's our highest rated player right now. Yes, we might need linebacker more. Yes, we might need wide receiver more, but he's the best player on our board. He's not, he's definitely not gonna be there with pick 112. So we're gonna take our guy now and figure the rest out later. You know, Jamar Jefferson, running back was not a need for the Detroit Lions, but he was the best player available at the end of that seventh round, or at least he was the highest graded player BPA on the Lions board at that point. And they said, okay, we're going to stock up at running back, get a good, young, talented, high ceiling running back with our 257th pick, and we're going to stash him away on the roster until he fully develops and emerges as a running back that we think he can be. When you look at position of need, the Lions only really address position of need with Amon Ross. Brown, Derek Barnes, and I would say with Ali McNeil, or better yet, with Levi Anwuzuriki, because Ali McNeil was another defensive tackle that they already drafted. Of the Lions' seven draft picks, only three of them really truly addressed a huge position of need, whereas offensive line, running back, a, detail, a second defensive tackle in the class, and cornerback were all positions that weren't looked at as positions of need so much as positions of or so much as picks of BPA, where the Lions got good athletes, good fits, and overall improved their roster more than reaching for a wide receiver would. Brad Holmes doesn't reach for players. If you're the best player available and you don't already have a stud at that position, you're probably going to get drafted by the Detroit Lions if you're there with their pick, right? Now, obviously, they're not going to go overboard. And they're not going to say, okay, we have two quality tackles. We're going to draft a tackle in the first round because he's BPA. But at the same time, unless the position is 100% truly filled out with no room for improvement, Brad Holmes is going to take any position if they are the best player available. So that being said, I want to use this model going forward in the offseason. I want to use this model for mock drafts. I want to use this model for free agency. I want to use this model going forward to try to predict the most accurate offseason of the Detroit Lions. But with all that being said, that is all for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below about the Brad Holmes model. Do you agree with the model? Do you agree with the ideology? Do you agree with how Brad Holmes is building this football team? Or do you not? What would you change about this model? And what would you change about how Brad Holmes is constructing the Detroit Lions? I'd be very curious what you guys think. Well, all that being said, that is all for you guys today. Thank you so very much for watching. Until next time, and as always, go Lions!